Uh, Coromandel International reported a mixed set of uh, numbers for the fourth quarter. Uh, revenue saw a very good 29% jump, but margins and profits came in lower. I think in the quarter there was the impact of uh, high raw material prices, uh, which of course now are coming off. Jay Shri Satagopan is President, Corporate and uh, Chief Financial Officer at uh, Coromandel International. She's joining us right now to take some questions. Ma'am, good morning. Good to have you with us here. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, can you just start there? Uh, I mean, what happened as far as margins are concerned? And I think one thing everybody wants to know is, uh, you know, uh, how much of high-cost inventory are you sitting on? What is the situation there? Uh, and uh, how much time will, will it take uh, for that to pass through, uh, pass through your numbers? So good morning. Uh, Coromandel actually during the quarter the full year has uh, a good set of numbers. Uh, what we have seen even during the quarter across the businesses, be it fertilizer as well as crop protection, is a good margin. Uh, we're not sitting on any high cost inventory at this point in time. However, given the sharp reduction in the raw material prices that we have been witnessing over the past few months, we are expecting a reduction in the subsidy rates from the government. And this is likely to be done in two stages. One as of 1st January 2023 and the other one 1st April 2023. The NBS rates have not yet been announced. And uh, as management, we have taken our best estimates to factor in the reduction in subsidy rates. And uh, that probably is a reason for a slightly muted Q4 performance in terms of margins. But if you were to compare uh, EBITDA per ton vis-a-vis -vis last year, the company has mm. tracked pretty well. All right, hi, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, you know, what is the EBITDA per ton guidance? You know, I think last year you had scaled, back, uh, scaled it back a little bit. But you have various measures, like backward integration as well, that you're looking at, and various such measures that could help this EBITDA per ton to trend uh, higher. Could you tell us what is the number likely to be? And sometimes, you know, you'll break it up in the first half as well as the second half of the year. So give us a broad number. So normally we look at a full year because this industry is seasonal. Uh, we produce and sell during the peak season, which is Karif, and uh, there is sales in Ravi as well. So one needs to look at it on an annualized basis rather than breaking up into quarter or half year or season. So from our standpoint, a lot of things that have happened in the last couple of years, one is uh, backward integration. We have put up our PAP plants. That's working extremely well. The SAP plant is currently um, under progress, and it should get commissioned by around uh, July, August of this year. So that's another uh, good way of uh, getting backward integrated. And most importantly, we have also invested in the mines in Senegal. Um, apart from this, the manufacturing facilities have developed the flexibility to process multiple grades of raw material, multiple types of rocks, so on and so forth. All of this operational efficiencies is also helping us to shore up the EBITDA per ton. Um, I think about 5,500, 6,000 rupees per ton be a good number for us to look at on an annualized basis. This compares with what in the last year? It will be in the more or less in a similar range. Uh, there could be upsides. But uh, with the raw material prices moving, we are still not certain about the subsidy uh, rates from the government. Um, hmm. we, should, we should look at a broadly similar range in the coming year as well. Okay. Uh, so, can you give us, you know, I didn't get the volume breakup. What was the exact volume breakup of this quarter? What did you do? And what is the expectation as we move along uh, both in the first quarter of the new fiscal as well as annually? What are you looking at? So, the, uh, we have seen a volume increase during the year. Uh, the overall sales volume has gone up by almost uh, 10 percent. Uh, ours is primarily in NPK. So, I'm talking a little bit on the fertilizer front. Uh, we have seen a similar traction happening on uh, the other businesses as well, um, whether it is speciality nutrients or crop protection. So there has been a growth across all of these uh, businesses. Okay, so you said 10% is what you've seen so far. What does this mean in terms of realizations? How much have the realizations gone up in FI23 overall? And what is the expectation in FI24? What kind of volume and realization growth can you uh, eke out? The volume growth could be anywhere between uh, 5 to 10 percent, depending upon uh, how the season is going to come in. 
uh, while IMD has forecasted uh, normal monsoon a couple of days back, we are also seeing that there is an El Nino that is being talked about. Having said that, uh, the water reservoir levels are good, soil moisture conditions is excellent. So Karif should see through. If there is going to be an El Nino impact, we probably will have the impact coming in Rabi. Uh, so we do see a volume growth. Uh, there's been a lot of debottlenecking happening at the plants that should also help us in uh, augmenting uh, volumes apart from uh, looking into opportunities for import. Uh, that's primarily on the fertilizer side. On the crop protection, uh, our focus has been more to get into specialized molecules. Uh, while there are a uh, lot of generic technicals that we are manufacturing, the new products that have got introduced almost six in number last year have gained uh, very good traction in the market and exceeded the internal targets of the budgets. A um, couple of new technicals have started uh, their manufacturing in our plants. Uh, there is also an intent, an action that's being taken to foray into adjacencies like specialty chemicals, which uh, we announced a couple of months back. So adjacent areas, diversifying, using our own uh, manufacturing infrastructure capabilities, expertise is another area that we are looking into. Uh, we are also looking into moving into right. CDMO. That is another area that has been identified. Okay. Ma'am, uh, you know, I wanted your thoughts on the, on, on the nano urea, nano DAP opportunity. Uh, I mean, I'd spoken with the fertilizer secretary about seven or eight months back, maybe uh, around that time. And he was saying that the government is extremely upbeat and excited about this and how what this can do for, uh, you know, how this will cut down imports, especially if, uh, you know, overall the fertilizer import bill will come off uh, drastically. It's much better bang for the buck, uh, et cetera. Uh, are you already producing this? Uh, what, is the, what is the opportunity overall and how are things progressing? So we have uh, obtained government approvals for uh, nano DAP. This has been uh, developed in-house by our R&D team. And uh, we have done extensive trials in the field, in the markets, and uh, the response has been encouraging. We are setting up a new nano DAP facility, which could produce about uh, uh, four crore uh, bottles of nano DAP. Uh, we think in a longer term, uh, there could be a substitution, especially for foliar applications, right? Uh, when nano DAP is being used, up to 20 to 25% is what uh, we think. But, you know, these are very early days. Uh, the first year when nano urea has been introduced, the response has been mixed from the farmers and the field. Uh, it will take two to three years for us to look into the product efficacy, make necessary changes, a right beginning, but some way to go. Okay, very quickly, ma'am, if you could fill us up with a couple of details. You announced the entry into specialty as well as industrial chemicals, as you just mentioned, some diversification crop protection chemicals. Could you tell us, say, you're going to be putting 1,000 crores. Uh, what is the, uh, you know, the revenue potential from this investment? And this will start reflecting from FY25, 26? Yeah, we are looking into almost 1,000 crores of investment in the goes into diversification, okay. setting up new mm -hmm. multi-purpose plants. Uh, primarily for the crop protection chemicals and also leveraging uh, the competencies into specialty and industrial chemicals. We expect, uh, say, about uh, 2,000 to 3,000 crores of revenue to come from these assets over the uh, next two to three year time frame. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, ma'am, for joining in and uh, speaking to us about the business and uh, about, uh, you know, the way forward. It's